fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high yo silver, the Lone Ranger. A great many years passed between the days of the covered wagon and the time when the first railroad pushed its steel rails into the western United States. The country was still uncivilized, however, and the railroad engineers were faced with many difficulties. The extremes of weather, the rough country and hostile Indians, all made the building of the railroad an almost superhuman task. It might never have been completed without the help of the masked rider of the plains. His knowledge of the country, his courage and daring solved problem after problem for the engineers. It was he more than any other man who made the winning of the West possible. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the railroad. There's going to be trouble. I know Silver! Away! <laughs> A supply train was driving west of Ogden over a newly laid stretch of track. Bruce Abbott, the superintendent in charge of construction, had taken the place of the fireman in the engine and... Got enough steam, Hank? <laughs> sure have, Bruce. Seems funny seeing you inside a cab. I thought you were stuck in an office for good. I was an engineer long before I was a superintendent, Hank. And from what I hear, doggone good one. Not so bad. How was Mort before we left? You stopped at his place, didn't you? Uh, he's coming around. Somebody sure hit him a good whack. I'd like to catch a fellow who did it. You think I wouldn't? Him and me have been pards ever since he first went firing for me. And some sneaking polecat of a freighter lays for him, hits him from behind. You know, Mort come close to being killed. So you blame the trouble we've been having on the freighters too, huh? Who else would it be? I agree with you. I wish we could get some proof against them. Ah, uh, get proof against Mike Cavanaugh, that's all. He's their leader. One of these days we will. Supplies stole, men hit from behind, drug poison, machinery stole in. There ain't a doggone thing them traders could think to do that they ain't done. You'd expect they'd realize there's no use fighting. The railroad has come to this country and it's here to stay. Wagon freighters are through. If they'd admit the fact and plan accordingly, they might save something from their investment. If they continue fighting, they'll lose everything. How's the dude take the trouble we're having? Paul Booth? Uh-huh. He's all right, Hank. It isn't his fault his father's general manager of the line. Nope. It ain't his fault he's your assistant, either. What he savvies about railroading, you can learn from a jackrabbit. He sure must be a help to you. He'll learn. Everybody's got to learn sometime. Yeah, they don't have to start learning at the top, though. I'm afraid you don't like it. Ah, that dude. Would he turn to and fire for me like you're doing? Uh, he'd be too doggone scared of getting his hands dirtied up. I'm here because I had to inspect this rail. Uh-huh. And you could have been doing it riding fancy like a passenger. But instead, you take Mort's place so you wouldn't have to ask one of the boys to do a little extra. Seems getting low, isn't it? Might fire up a little. What's wrong? A couple of fool cow punches setting the horses right in the middle of the track ahead of us. Must think we can fly right over them. Still 
still there? Hey, he's stirring his step. Wait until the last moment, most likely. If they're cow punches, they've got to have their fun. Blast them! <laughs> Ain't they got no sense at all? You think they see you? Of course they do. And if they didn't, they could hear us. It wouldn't be a holdup. Oh, nobody'd hold up a supply train. Truth <laughs> ain't gonna bud. Maybe there's something wrong. We'll blame soon find out. And if they figure on stopping us just for a joke, I'll have their fool hide. You better stop fast. I'll tell them something. Oh, Hank, look there. Matt. And the redskin beside him. What? Oh, 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 oh. What's the meaning of this? We ain't carrying anything that'd be worth your while to steal. Look down the track. Huh? Beyond the curve. Hank, good Lord. I don't see it. You look at track. It's torn up. Hank, somebody's ripped up at least three sections. Jump and see Hossifat. And we was heading right for it. If the masked fellow hadn't stopped us, we'd have turned over. Just as sure as it was, them freighters done it. Impossible, we'd have been killed. Stranger, I suppose you're an outlaw. You wouldn't be wearing that mask. But you've done us a good turn, we won't forget. What makes you think the freighters are responsible for this? Because it's them that's been making all the trouble. You caught them at it? Not yet, stranger. But the time will come when Cavanaugh will make one slip, and that'll be his finish. I've heard of Cavanaugh. I'll bet you ain't heard nothing good. As a matter of fact, I've heard a number of good things about him. You talk like you was a friend of his. I've never seen him. Well, I don't know where you got your information, but I can tell you you're mistaken. Mike Cavanaugh owns the largest fleet of wagon freighters serving this district. There isn't another freighter around who doesn't follow Cavanaugh's lead. And that places the responsibility for the troubles we've had right up to him. You might be right. I know I am. However, I think I'd prefer to find out for myself. We'd better be getting on, Tonto. Uh, yes, and we'll have to get back to Ogden and send men to repair this damage at once. Let's get started, Hank. Back her up. Uh-huh. Stranger, hope we'll meet again soon. Perhaps we may. We make camp now. There's something else I want to do first. Uh-huh. Mike Cavanaugh's headquarters are in Rock Rapids, the town the railroad's approaching. Um, we right there? Yes. We've heard so many conflicting stories about the rivalry between the freighters and the railroad tunnel. I think it's time somebody found out the truth. Uh, we'll start out by having a look at Cavanaugh. Come on, Get Sergeant. him up, Scout. It was evening before the Lone Ranger and Tonto approached Rock Rapids. Before they could make out the town itself, they saw a red glow in the distance. And as they rode closer, discovered that two large wagons, fully loaded with freight, were on fire. A large crowd had gathered to witness the blaze, and none of those looked like two of Cavanaugh's freighters. Mm, that's right. Pull in between these buildings here. We'll be undercover and still be able to see what's going on. Uh -huh. This is close enough, Tonto. Oh, Scout. Oh, oh. oh, Silver. Those are Cavanaugh's wagons, all right. You can make out his name painted on the side. The fire hasn't reached yet. Uh. A big fellow in the center looking on. I wonder if that isn't Cavanaugh himself. And that what fellow say him look like? Yes, he answers the description. Look, Tonto. And that's Cavanaugh. He's going after that little breed. Tonto, ride a little closer. Perhaps we can learn what the trouble is. You little snake. Come here. You ain't going no place. Give it to him, mate. Turn the breed over your knee and spank it. Take the truth out of this country. Yeah. Senor Cavanaugh, I have done nothing. I do no harm. Diablo. Leave me go, senor. Talk up, confound you. Did you set fire to these wagons? Did the railroad hire you to do his dirty work first? No, no, it is not so. Ah, you do anything you was paid to do, just so it didn't take no nerve. If I was sure you did this, I'd string you up myself. Why do you think I do these things, senor? I am not the outlaw. You're a sneaking polecat. No, no, I swear. Ah, you, you swear. swear. You swear. Ah, you wouldn't say what time it was without lying about it. Speak up, blast you. How much did Abbott give you for this job? Nothing, Senor Cavanaugh, nothing. I am on your side. I do uh, not. On my you. side. You wanted to get even with me ever since I fired you. Please, I ah, Get away from me. I dirty my hands by touching you. Go on, scat. Big dog, you ape. Now I will show you a pig. <laughs> Look at the breed run for it. He must think you're a whole menagerie, Mike. The names he calls you. You better watch out or he'll be knifing you in the back. Yeah, knifing me in the back like the railroad's trying to do. Burn me wagon, steal him afraid, hiring my men away from me. I'm just about through. This keeps up and I'm going to fight back just as crooked and dirty as they are. Bruce Abbott started this. But by thunder, I'll finish it in order reason why. In plenty, man. Now, though, there's something definitely wrong here. Bruce Abbott blames Mike Cavanaugh, and Mike blames Bruce. Uh. 
And from what I've seen of both men, with what we've been told, I doubt that either one would try to drive the other out with crooked methods. And that's what Tonto think. Tonto, those two men are going to meet. That's good. You remember that small grove of trees halfway between here and Ogden on the south side of the rails? Uh, Tonto remember. That's where we'll make camp. Uh, this is what I want you to do. Get Mike to go with you. If he won't go willingly, force him to. And what you do? I'm going after Bruce Abbott. I'll bring him there, and we'll see what happens when the two of them meet face uh. to face. Be careful, but get Mike as soon as you can. Hunter, do that. And I'll see you later. Come on, Silver. Bruce Abbott's office was in Ogden. Later that same evening, he was seated at his desk, and across from him was young Paul Booth, his assistant and the son of the railroad's general manager. Bruce finished reading a letter from the home office and tossed it impatiently aside with... Yeah, they want miracles. They're just asking you to do the job you were hired to do. Yes? You think I'm to blame for the delays we've had, Paul? Well, you're in charge, aren't you, Bruce? What is there I failed to do that I should have done? I'm not your boss. Right. Paul, let's put our cards on the table. I've defended you in front of the men for the good of the organization. But I don't have to pretend between the two of us. <laughs> I've been doing your work as well as my own. You wouldn't have been made my assistant if it weren't for your father's authority. Oh, so you're criticizing my father, eh? He's a good man, but a poor judge of his son's worth. Why, Hold you... Hold on, I'll finish what I have to say. You've made it clear enough since you've been here that you think you're better fitted for the job I hold than I am. At least I'd catch the crooks that cause all the trouble. Possibly, but you've caused trouble in another direction. I haven't the least doubt that you're the cause of the things that were written in this letter. Yeah? What did it say? It stated emphatically that the next accident causing a delay in construction would mean my discharge. Well, fair enough. I've known your father for a long time. He's had complete confidence in me until you came here and started writing him letters. Maybe it's about time I came along. Maybe he needed someone on the ground who'd tell him the truth. You're just sore Ah, you're a find... spoiled kid who's had everything his own way. Well, as long as you're working under me, that's finished. From now on, you'll do your share. I'll send you packing just as fast as I would one of those men out there laying rails. <laughs> Bruce, I've got an idea I'll be here long after you're gone. Very well. But until then, by heavens, you'll obey my orders. Mark. Matt, the masked man I met today. Bruce, you're coming with me. I'm what? Well, so you're friends with outlaws, eh? There's a man I want you to meet, Bruce. Get your hat and coat. We're riding and we're not wasting time. Bruce Abbott was forced to accompany the Lone Ranger and they rode to the small woods halfway between Ogden and Rock Rapids. Tonto and Mike Cavanaugh were already there, and the Indian jumped to his feet at the sound of approaching hoofs. Whoa, Silver! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Tonto, get Mike all right. I see you did. Well, I'll be... Mike Cavanaugh. Bruce Abbott. Why, you're skulking no good crawling kin to a sidewinder. You, Mike. You... If I'd known it was you I was going to meet, I'd have brought a gun along and given you what you've been asking for. What I've been asking for? Why, you're... Hold got... on. There's going to be no fighting here. But he's the man who's responsible. I've heard all that before. You can't stop me from giving this maverick a piece of my mind, and I'll I do it. I can stop you and will. Are you working for this fellow? I'm not. Bruce, you've had trouble building the railroads. You've blamed it on Mike. With good reason. Mike, you've had troubles as well. I happen to know the two of your wagons were destroyed early this evening. I also know that you accused Bruce of being behind it. Accused me? And why not? You think I'd stoop to a thing like that? You think the only way I can get this railroad bill is by using your crooked methods? To blazes with your railroad and your choo-choo trains. All I want is to be left alone. That's what I want. I didn't start this. Wait. I didn't have any fun. But I didn't. I said wait. Well, I'm not going you're to stand here. You're both right and you're both wrong. Unless I'm mistaken in the way I've sized up the two of you. What do you mean by that? I'm convinced you're both wrong when you accuse each other of crooked attempts to cause trouble. I'm convinced you're right when you each say you ask only to be let alone. If he ain't started this trouble, who did? Well, that's what we're going to try to find out. I'd like to know something. Yes? This is the second time I've met you. Both times you've been masked. From what I've seen of you, I don't know what to decide. Well? Either you're not an outlaw, or what I thought I knew about outlaws was all wrong. Now, which is it? Tonto and I are not outlaws. You know, I'm inclined to believe you. Yeah, you are a funny-sounding fella for a crook, stranger. Well, let's get down to business. Neither one of you is behind the trouble there's been, and someone who hasn't been suspected must be. I don't know who. Nor do I. I'm going to ask both of you some questions, however, and if you answer honestly, we may find out. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger had closely questioned Mike Cavanaugh and Bruce Abbott, he allowed them to return to their homes. Then he talked over the situation with Tonto. Tonto, from what we got out of Mike and Bruce, it seems there are only two men who might have caused all this trouble. Mm, that's right. One was that breed we saw near the fire. Mike told us Pedro's hated him ever since he caught the breed stealing and discharged him. Ah. From what Mike said, Pedro wouldn't have the intelligence to plan all the suspicious accidents that have happened both to the railroad and the freighters. And he wouldn't have a motive. He might try to get even, but his method would be a knife in the back, not a large-scale quarrel between the two outfits. Maybe, maybe Mike right. Bruce, however, named Paul Booth. Paul would have the intelligence. Ah. And yet Bruce won't believe that Paul would deliberately wreck the railroad. He's willing to admit Paul would like to have him fired. He won't admit Paul would be disloyal to his own father. Other fellow hurt father. Paul wouldn't be the first disloyal son. There's one drawback, though. What that? Bruce says Paul hates physical labor. Paul, for instance, would never have gone to the effort of tearing up those rails. Oh. There's one other objection. Paul has a perfect alibi for the time that a number of the attacks occurred. He was with Bruce when Mort McMahon, the fireman, was struck. And you think him not crook? I don't know. There's a possibility I just thought of. Mm, what that? Pedro and Paul Booth might be together in this. Paul could plan it, and Pedro could carry out the plan. Oh, that's right. We can't accuse either one of them, however, without proof. And what we do? Tonto, we are either going to pin the guilt on them or prove they're innocent. Uh. Here, Silver. Call Scout Kimo Sabe. Here, Scout. I'll ride to Ogden, Tonto. You'll ride to Rock Rapids. Tonto, do that. Steady, old fellow. I want you to keep an eye on Pedro. I'll watch Paul Booth. Uh. That, that heap good idea. We well, want to get to the bottom of this as soon as possible. Another serious accident and Bruce loses his job. We've got to prevent that. Tonto, try. Good. As soon as I learn anything, I'll return here. You do the same. Uh. It was the very next night that Paul Booth quietly dismounted near a tumble-down cabin in the hills north of Ogden. A light shone from a broken window, and Paul looked inside before making his way to the sagging door. There he knocked three times. A pause, then twice more. Is that you, Senor Booth? Quick, open up. See, si, one moment. I have been waiting. Let me in. Close the door. See. Si. Now then, let's get this over quickly. I want to get back to town. Senor Booth has another little job for Pedro, huh? Keep your voice down, you fool. This place is about as private as a town hall. Look at that window and that lamp. Blow it out. See, si, Senor. There. It is out. Poof. We're in the dark. That's better. Pedro, I've got one more job for you. It's big, but I think it'll be the last. And the job? I suppose you know there's passenger service on the railroad from the east to Ogden now. So I have heard. You know that trestle over Big Pine Canyon? The trestle they completed just a month ago? I know it well. Pedro, you're going to fix that trestle so that when the passenger train crosses... It breaks through. No. I say yes. There will be lives lost. Not your life. But if I should be caught, senor. If you're caught, it'll be your own fault. Who's to see you around there? There was never a white man in that country till the construction crew came through. But the trestle, that will not be easy to do. I didn't expect it would be. It will take several days. I planned on that. And the money, senor. For such work, I will have to have much money. How much? I've got money. A thousand dollars. Nonsense. Senor, I will not do it for less. It isn't worth half that. But when the train fall, I will be wanted for murder. No, senor. It is one thousand dollars or nothing. You money-grabbing breed. All right. If you have to have a thousand, you'll get a thousand. And you pay me when? In two days. It is as good as done. Bueno, senor. This will be Abbott's finish, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> that will be worth money to you, senor. Plenty. Dad said the minute I proved myself on this job, he'd turn over the money that was left to me by my grandfather. Si. With Abbott fired, I'll get his job, the trouble will stop, <laughs> and I'll get the credit. You are most clever. Smart enough to get what I go after. That's all then, Pedro. I've got to be getting back. You start on that trestle at once. You'll get your money, don't fear. I do not doubt your words, senor. And while I think of it, there's something else you'd better not doubt. What is that? That as sure as you talk, I'll slit your throat. No, no, I do not talk. I am quiet like the grave. Yeah, if you're not, you'll be quiet in your grave. 
Goodbye now. I'll leave first. Give me several minutes start. Adios. $1,000. That is good. That is most good. You rich gringo will pay Pedro well. Not only once, but many times. It, it is you, Senor Boot? You, you have come back? Come, Hunter. Uh, Who are you? I cannot see. I... Look closely, Pedro. Uh, amigo, you wear the mask. Pedro, I followed Paul Booth and Tonto followed you. Our trails met here. I do not sabe. I do not Tonto. see. Tonto. Uh, Pedro says he doesn't understand. I think it's up to us to see that he does. If he has any objections, I think you know how to handle him. Uh, uh, uh. Tonto Savvy. No, no. Stay back, amigo. Well, do not touch me. I am you not. No, no, please. I, I beg you. Quiet. Don't. Pedro, we know exactly how to deal with your kind. No, senor. You're prepared to prove it. The masked man, after his visit to the cabin in the hills, sent Tonto eastward on a mysterious errand. Paul Booth kept his appointment with Pedro and paid him the thousand dollars he had promised. We see him now, several days later, as he paces up and down the length of Bruce Abbott's office. In heaven's name, Paul, what are you grinning about? Nothing, Bruce. Nothing. I suppose not. You object to my feeling well, do you? Ah. <laughs> you might as well. You object to everything else I do. Quit that pacing the floor. You'd better do something for your nerves. See, you might try... You might try letting me get my work done. Which reminds me, these are reports you're supposed to be making out. Oh, never mind apologizing. Apologizing? Why, you know... By the way, while I think of it, get any report on that westbound train yet? The passenger? Yeah. It's on time. Oh. Why? Expecting someone? No, no. Just wondered. Look, Paul, how about helping out? There's more paperwork than I can handle... Dig in and make yourself useful. Oh, no, I don't Mr. feel Booth. it. Yes? This just come in over the wires for you. I thought you'd like to have it right away, so I brought it over. Thanks. I'll take it. Telegram, Paul? You can see it is. Who from? It's from... Good Lord. Huh? Something wrong, Mr. Booth? My horse. Flares. Where's some flares? Now, what in tarnation got into him? Must have had something to do with that message. I don't know as how it could, Mr. Abbott. Twan't nothing but word from his paw. Yes? Good news it was, too. His pa said he was coming to Ogden today by that train from the east. I see. Flighty young fella, ain't he? Yep, mighty flighty. Instead of acting pleased to see his pa, he rushes out like it was the worst thing that happened. Paul rushed from the office, found several flares, then saddled his horse with trembling fingers. A minute later, he was racing eastward from town, following the railroads right away. Mile after mile sped by while Paul's whip beat a savage tattoo on his horse's flank. He sat at the trestle over Big Pine Canyon at last, but at the same moment heard the thin whistle of the approaching passenger train bearing his father. We've got to make it! We've got to! Faster! 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 Paul reached the trestle where his mount would have refused to go further if he had not driven it on with whip and spur. The whistle sounded more clearly. Black smoke pouring from the engine could be seen against the moonlit sky. Beyond the trestle, Paul flung himself from the saddle. He seized a flare, lit it, and ran toward the onrushing train. Stop! Can't you hear me? Stop! Stop the train! You'll be killed! Killed, all of you! Stop, I tell you! The flare! Can't you see the flare? Stop before you kill! Oh, thank heaven. They heard me. Heard me. Hey, what's the trouble? What's he flag is down for? My father! He's on the train! Sure he is! Now what of it? Now look back there! Here comes them cool passengers! You stop us like this, like they got them scared to death! Hey, what's the trouble? Something wrong with the engine? Ain't a hold up, is it? Hey, where's the trouble? Dad! Hey, Dad! Paul, did you stop this train? The trestle. It isn't safe to cross. I. I just found out that the freighters must have weakened it on purpose. You are uh, the freighters are not responsible if the trestle's been weakened. I'm asking. They are. I must be. Son, I was told you'd be here. I was told more than that. I was told you'd do your best to stop this train. Told? But how? I don't see. This Indian told me. Mm, that's right. No, no, he couldn't have. Oh, he... you were trapped into showing your hand. We knew if you got word your father was coming on this train, you'd never let an accident happen if possible. Wait, listen. You can't listen. say you just learned about the trestle because your father was told of our plan two days ago by Tonto. 
He couldn't have known then. You'd just discover the damage to the trestle now. If you were innocent... He, he, he could. You, you might have fixed this up between you. That you might could... be true if we couldn't prove that the only word you got from anyone was a telegram from your father. Both the telegraph operator and Bruce Abbott can testify. No, to no, no. Moreover, there's Pedro's confession. Pedro's confession? And the money you paid him, which will make good evidence. Pedro was forced to tell your scheme. Dad, you don't believe it, do you? You don't think I'd do a thing like this? No, you can't. I, I wouldn't... wouldn't have believed it, Paul, if I hadn't seen what amounted to your confession with my own eyes. We could have proved your guilt before. It was your father who insisted on doing it this way. He wanted to see for himself. Who are you? Me? Chucks, I'm Mike Cavanaugh. The fellow that was supposed to be fighting with Bruce here till the mass fella come along and prove different. Bruce! You here, too? We saddled and followed as soon as you'd left town. Mr. Booth. Yes, Bruce? Mike and I have been talking things over. There's no question but what the railroad is going to destroy the freighting business. But I think I have a solution. Well? The railroad can use his equipment and his men. If you're agreeable, we'll buy him out. Very well. I've never been in favor of bankrupting our competitors if a compromise could be reached. Thank you, Bruce. And you, too, Mr. Booth. I know how you feel about your son, Mr. Booth. This may do him good, however. A few years in jail might change his viewpoint and make a man of him. A few years in jail? <laughs> After wrecking the trestle? After nearly killing everyone in the train? I'll be hung. The train wasn't wrecked, Paul. But the trestle... And the trestle was never damaged. The masked man saw to that. Pedro had already confessed his part in the scheme when he took your money. You can't be punished for a crime that was never committed. But, son, you have only the masked man to thank that you're not a murderer. Never forget that. Oh, <laughs> The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.